here. This is the archivist, y'all. Exclusively interviewing the one and only Dead Prez. Alright, what up? And who is the infamous Dead Prez? We're looking at him based on talking about George Washington, <laughs> talking about Abraham Lincoln. He said the infamous. <laughs> Word. The infamous like Mob Deep. Yeah. Shout out to P, Free P, matter of fact. Shout out to P, behind enemy lines. You yeah. know what I mean? This is our uh, big M1 right here. I'm representing uh, motherfuckers who have had it up to here. Don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? So if you feel the way I feel, then that's why I'm talking to you right now. Yeah. I'm a holistic man. I'm a realistic man. But you can just call me stupid man. And what is the next stage for the evolution of hip hop? Wow. The <laughs> next stage for the evolution of hip hop. Um, wow, I feel like I'm getting interrogated. Um, um, the next stage for the evolution of hip hop is for people to uh, be exactly who they are, tell their truth. And own and own they and own their words, own their livelihood and their spirit, and own their history, and own up to everything. That's the that next evolution. <laughs> um, you know, evolution ain't really something that I, I that I'm skilled at predicting. You know what I mean? Like where it's gonna go? You know? Um, I think. Hip hop will continue to be creative. It will continue to battle with the, the corporations and versus the, the culture. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and the result will be, you know, whether we victorious in that or not. You know what I mean? Um, what I hope for, what I work for, is uh, a bridge that uh, helps us appreciate the culture. Right, in a way that it can be economically uh, viable, right, without sacrificing um, the integrity of our people, of our movement, of our community. You know what I mean? That's that's what I hope and work for. You know what I mean? So, uh, we'll see what happens. And the song, one of the most sought up hottest tracks by any DJ, hip hop. Let us know the creation and inspiration capturing the struggle behind it and the album Let's Get Free, one of my favorite albums of all time. Share your idea and history of feeling it. Well, um, the, the song, the track, Hip Hop, was a, was a beat on the ASR 10. I was messing around with, with the bass line. Coming from Florida, I wanted something to shake the trunk, but I was kind of just playing around. And we was kind of making fun of the music at the time, you know what I mean? The radio, what the radio was doing. And, uh, but it ended up turning into something more, more serious than just making fun. And it was, a, it was a platform for us to make comments on, you know, how we feel about where the game is at right now, you know what I mean? And it was like one of the last songs we did for the album, Let's Get Free. And it ended up being the biggest song from that album, you know what I mean? So. I think that it just, uh, in some in some ways, it captured the sentiment of people who are tired of the mainstream, and even ten years later, it's still relevant. You know what I mean? And people still feel like that, and the mainstream bullshit is still, you know, oversaturating everything. So I think that's why we even have relevance. You know, today, you know, in the game, it's because so many people was tired of the bullshit. You know what I mean? yeah. yeah, basically, you already heard it. You know what I mean? Shout out 10 years of Let's Get Free. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I think basically there are those who go on, tell it like it is, who going to be exactly what, it, what I think people. Uh, have a need to express. I think that that song helps to sum it up. I'm glad to be a part of history. 
and what are your thoughts on the Illuminati, Freemasonry, New World Order, and as for the people, what is the best ways to conquer these corrupt parties and the network of CNN? Once again, uh, you know, things like Illuminati and Freemasonry and whatnot, I think um, it's cool to study, you know what I mean? I think it's, it's cool to be informed, to research your research, you know, to, to investigate uh, things like that, you know what I mean? Um, to see how it ties into the political scheme and the reality we live in. I think a lot of, some of that shit is hype. You know, some of, some of it is comic book, you know, answers to, to real world questions. Um, but I'm not an authority on, you know, behind the scenes of how the game works. So I say, if, if, if you out there studying and you and you got a lot of information on Illuminati or the Freemasons or whatever, and, and fact from fiction, you know what I mean, pass it on, you know what I mean? If, if it's things we should be aware of. But recognize that besides the Illuminati and Freemasons, the regular government, the fucking Republicans and Democrats, is, you know what I mean, and, and, and the IMF, and the, you know, and the whole, the whole system itself, not just secret societies and hidden away shit, but the shit right out here, the police department, the courts, is, is you know, uh, representing our, our enemies to the people and to our growth and development, you know what I mean? Um, not taking nothing away from who these diabolical organizations may or may not be, but definitely we could get lost sometimes in all these, you know, uh, uh, boogeymen, so to speak, you know what I mean? So I try to deal with the devils I know, you know what I mean? And, and you know what I mean? Which is the, you know, all the bureaucracies that right here out here that you ain't gotta look on the internet to find, you know what I mean? Right here, the school, the church, you know what I mean? The police, you know, shit like that. I agree with Stephen. Um, you know, totally and wholeheartedly. I think the assumption is is that there's basically two sides. You know, that's basically what people are coming to the conclusion about and when they start to identify forces like the Illuminati or, or Freemasons or Skull and Bones or the Bilderbergs or, you know, the G8 or um, whatever it comes in, my, in, in mind. I think people are identifying that there's, there's two sides. And that there has to be one side that is attempting to take something away from the other side. Historically, there's a basis for that. So we, we can talk about it scientifically, or we can talk about it like Sticks said. Stick said. We, we can talk about basically what we, what, what we can talk about based on what's really here, or we can base, base it off things that are, that are not, that you don't, that we are, that, that don't know and are held secret for that reason. The reality is we want to change the world. We recognize that, that these two sides exist. Which side do you stand on? Stop bullshitting me with the double talk. And just pick a side. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's it. And let us know the relationship of Lord Jamar of Brand Nubian connecting you and being signed with Loud Records. <laughs> right on, man. <laughs> the archivist. Um, Lord Jamar. A brand new view, Gods in the Earth. Uh, we met him in Brooklyn, New York, in the, in the mid '90s, and uh, we had, of course, we recognized him from Brand New and been big fans, been inspired by the, the message and the music. And uh, you know, we we approached him like, "Hey, man, we we do this too, you know, like." You know, what, can we work together? Is any we trying to get on? We trying to you know get our foot in the door, you know. And uh, he basically was like, yeah, I work with y'all. He, he he listened to us, invited us to his to his lab, and we created a friendship and and, uh, and and began working on music. You know what I mean? And, and through our relationship with him, we were able to link with Steve Rifkin at Loud Records, and um, and that's pretty much how we. Uh, Got to make our first album professional. Yeah. Basically, shout out to Lord J. Shout out to Now Rule. All yeah. the guards know what that is. That's New Rochelle. You know what I mean? Shout out to Medina. Yeah. You know what I mean? Shout out to the Pilon. Y'all know what that is. That's the Bronx. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, 
shout out to the nation and because uh, we had a reverence for, for what that was before it came. We were in Tallahassee, Florida um, under the illest kind of influence of things that we wanted to be able to express, but people who helped guide and, and carve like a, a beautiful path was like X-Clan, was like Rest in Peace Guru and them gangstar dropped that step in the arena, which was nuts. Um, you know, um, Boots from the Cool, um, came along at that time, um, you know, like it was some really good stuff and, and Brand Nubian definitely was there. So when we got to New York, we were able to see like a beacon of light and things that wasn't really making sense because the music industry is made of trickery and treachery. It's an age old story.